Hey YouTube. All right, we're gonna do that camping overland trip that I was talking to you guys about. There's not really any overlanding except for we're going over a lot of blacktop. Going out to Mount Cheeha in Alabama, there's a little bit of gravel road going into our campsite. But this is where I wanna try out. We got the Garmin roof rack on, we got the new fogs on, which is great because we just went through torrential downpour in Atlanta where some vehicle got stuck in the rain and got somehow got flooded and needed a Jeep to pull them out, but they got a boat, I don't know. It's something ridiculous. Anyways, we're at the uh, Villa Rica Ingalls. We're gonna hit them with the sign. It's proudly American owned. And while I was in there getting all my overlanding supplies, you know, like bagged firewood and ice and T-bone steaks, uh, the whole store is waiting for a gender reveal. I was offered free milk because someone had extra with their WIC card. And my cashier told me he's never been camping, but if he ever did go, he'd bring his katana. So that's what you gotta love about South Atlanta, Georgia. Um, North Georgia, I, I don't know. There's a rusty old fireworks stand here. I, I probably should have gone to Walmart. Anyways, I walked around for hours because they don't even have like half name brand stuff or anything from this century. But uh, shout out Villa Rica, you did good. All right, so we have the Minnow Campers trailer. And a lot of people have asked me who's seen it already. Does it pop up? No, this is as big as it gets. It's like a little thing that holds just a mattress, but has AC in it. So anyways, I'm being quick because we're trying to get there before it gets dark. It might rain tonight, so I gotta set up my rain fly in my hammock. Nicole and baby Abby are sleeping in the uh, tent here. I got firewood, which I'm gonna throw in the garbage roof rack. Ugh. Hopefully it doesn't rain, but it is in a plastic bag. But that plastic bag perforated. Man, I just feel like an overlander now. All right, so we got T-bone steaks, we got eggs. We got like $200 worth of crap. I'm about to load my Pelican cooler down with ice and adult beverages and all sorts of other things. And we're gonna go, you know, set up. We'll set up, I'll show you the setup. You've seen our setup before, sort of. This will be a little different because we're kind of glamping overlanding this time. But I really wanted to test out this trailer and I want to see how the Cherokee pulled. Right now we're getting 20 miles per gallon with this thing. It's fantastic. I'll give you more info about this later. I'll give you a walk around of it. But for now, let's get going with this trip. Let's go to slept through the night everything went good there was some rain when we first got here so i got my rain fly hooked up on my eno got um everything was good though we had some dropping water from the trees but pretty good nicole slept in the uh so this um camper we got is called a, a minnow camper um and their slogan is vacation bay which is a little corny but um this guy like, locally rents and builds these so we rented this it was 45 bucks a day and that's price pretty well I think and uh, all it basically is is a small room that'll hold a mattress we have a twin in here but I think it would hold a full it's got a wood roof a couple windows it's got a vent above and I don't know if you can see from the video but there's an AC unit and some cabinets the AC does need um, either a generator or a source of electricity but um, where we're staying there's actually like a group pavilion that has uh, AC or uh, electric so um, has an electric hookup, so we're going to um, run a drop cord there tonight and then actually run air conditioning for Nicole and Abby, but they slept good. It got down to maybe low 60s last night in July, and it's this morning it's uh, low 70s, so it feels really, really good. Uh, I think it's going to be a good weekend in camping. I'll give you some more information on this. We're actually up here with our church on a um, group camping trip, so um, some of the time is going to be... <laughs> with them but I'm gonna do definitely do some uh, filming to give her a good review of how this camper does and my thoughts on it but yeah I was gonna check in for this morning 
So we're here for uh, Friday through Sunday. So this is Saturday morning, and uh, we just had some breakfast, as you saw. Um, and I think we may do a little hike later. We have, we're at uh, Mount Chiha, and um, there's a little lake over here, and there's lots of nice little hiking. So uh, that's it. I'll check in if uh, anything else develops, or I want to give you some more information. But thanks for watching. So it's starting to rain. We just did a little hike. Sorry, there's rain on the glens. So we did a little hike and uh, went to uh, see some falls and some rapids. It's kind of cool. So I'm under my rain fly, but uh, Nicole had to feed the baby. So she, I turned the air conditioning on and she's over in that awesome little trailer camp. So I'm going to give you a full walk through that thing tomorrow. Uh, today we're just going to try to do some hikes and hear the weather, you know, cook some good camping food, hang out. Um, hopefully not get too wet. I got my hammocks packed up in there. That's been great. It's been a great assist for having a hammock because like now that it's raining I can put all of our gear in there and then um, later if it when it's, it's supposed to quit then I'm, or Nicole and I can sleep in there and I can put my hammock back up and everything's all good. I think it'd be neat too for like a hunting camp as well. I'm really considering building one of these or, or buying one but uh, we'll see what, uh, how else it goes. I saw an, uh, a sign for ORV trail today so Maybe we'll take a little detour with both of those and see how they do. We'll see. camping uh, I got the trailer right here behind me we're at the mount top of Mount Chiha we'll see if we can find a cool outlook for you we came to get a good view uh, but I don't know if you can see behind me it's just super uh, foggy on top of the mountain we're basically in the clouds and even though we're only at 2,500 feet of elevation it's cold it was windy last night it beat on the hammock terribly I was in there and my rain fly was just slapping the side I probably woke up four or five times but Nicole didn't even know it was windy inside this. The insulation was so good. It's nice and stable. And, and her and Abby had a good night's sleep, which I'm thankful for. Um, you know, it's towed really well behind this Jeep. We've had to get it out a couple times. or We, we went to do a couple different hikes. And uh, it was easy to take off if we just needed to be in the uh, trailhawk and need to leave behind. So it's I, I'll say this. It's been very convenient. It's towed well. The Jeep uh, towed well, towing it. Uh, the guy says it's about 800 pounds uh, empty, and he said usually most people don't load them up more than 13 or 1400 pounds, so well underneath the tow rating. Now, uh, the manufacturer says it's um, made by coming a quality control and, uh, oh, excuse me, quality cargo, and they rate the GVWR for 2990. So almost 3,000 pounds. Now we didn't have that weight, not even worth close, but uh, pretty impressive. Um, I'm gonna go through a whole walkthrough when we get back to our house, but just kind of giving you a little overview, review. Uh, I slept in a hammock, but voice is hoarse because it was cold and windy and rainy, but uh, Nicole slept inside and, and her and Abby feel great. Um, so I would definitely consider getting one of these. This one is a four by eight. And if it was six by eight, I think I'd be a lot happier with it. That's our, been our biggest thing. I would love to have crawled in there last night, but there just wasn't enough room width-wise. And the track-wise, it's narrower than the Jeep. I think with the eight foot wide, it would be the same width. So not an issue. I wouldn't want anything wider than the Jeep, um, just for how it tracks down a trail or on the highway or a road. But uh, we're gonna get on the road, um, see if we can find any cool stuff. It's only about 11 o'clock today, so uh, we may go straight through or we may just try to find a few uh, things in this area. It's pretty rural where we're at, but sometimes you can stop and see some cool scenic views or a nice restaurant or maybe we'll even see. We saw a, a, an ORV trail and thought may, it was so wide we thought maybe you can take a Jeep on it. But we looked at the rules and uh, it was called the Kentuck ORV and apparently it's only for uh, motorcycles and four-wheel drive or um, side-by-sides and uh, ATVs. So we'll follow the rules. Anyways, we're going to head out and uh, 
Like I said, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a full review here shortly. Uh, when we get it back to the house, I'll do a full walkthrough, which is, it won't take very long at all because it's not that big. All right, let's get started. saw we found a mountain overlook we thought that was pretty cool but then they were like you know we camped we swam uh, we hiked trails um, you know we've been through some rough weather we did outdoor cooking we've done the full experience but we've just done a few gravel roads around camp so we figured we actually before we leave this area which is the Talladega National Forest uh, we're right at the Mount Cheeha which is the highest place in Alabama State Park and we figured we need to find on a couple roads so uh, I saw this road the other day or when we first got here and I looked across the road I looked up what what road it was and it was an ORV uh, trail but what I didn't realize is across the street this is NF 651 it's actually a national forest road I did some research uh, we backtracked and uh, we're gonna ride it. it's about a 30 minute ride um, trailer should do good We've only been on the trail for a few minutes, and Abby uh, decided she needed a diaper change, which is fine. Um, so it's got sort of all-terrain style tires. Doesn't have a ton of ground clearance, but uh, a little less than what the Trailhawk would have. And then, of course, your low point's going to be maybe your chains and uh, your jack here. But I think it'll do fine. This road's just pretty much uh, a rutted out gravel road, a few potholes, things like that. But just like overlanding, right? So we'll see how it does. That's what we want to know. Because we're we're doing a review for ourselves. I'm thinking about building one of these or buying one. And um, so far, I think all I would really change, and I've said I would change, is making it a little higher. Maybe some all terrains. But it's tracked so well behind the Jeep. And so I almost wouldn't ruin, want to ruin that. But I definitely would want to make it a little bit wider so that um, you know I can sleep in there as well. And uh, maybe some different cabinetry kind of things. But... Uh, yeah, let's see how it does, and I think I'll even, uh, thinking about looking for some blackberries. I've been finding them everywhere. I think I see some. Let's better go through Snakey. Hey, snakes. Hey, snakes and bears. Don't murder me. I won't murder you back. Let's see, this is what overlanding is all about. We're out in the middle of nowhere, Alabama. No one's been down this road. We've been on this road for a few minutes. Nice and private, pretty, all legal. We've paid our fees. And I'm just going to get me a big old handful of blackberries on the free. Sorry, Mr. Bear. You're going to be upset when you get here. And I've already chomped all these up. Nicole, you want some? Abby, you want some? I think that's a yes. Oh yeah. Look at this. Hopefully these aren't poison berries or poison berries or poop your guts out berries. They're not. They're blackberries. They're gonna be delicious. Alright, let's hit some trails.
Hey guys, so uh, we got back to our house. We got them loaded. Um, Nicole and Abby are just hanging out of the house and I'm taking back the trailer to the guy we rented it from. As I kind of mentioned earlier, we rented this trailer. It was 45 bucks a day. No other fees associated with it. We got it on Outdoorsy.com. We ended up meeting the guy that um, builds these trailers and rents them. And a uh, really nice guy. Um, it, he said I can drop it any time off Sunday, so it's 7.30. I'm heading back to Cleveland, Georgia, which is about... Uh, 30 minutes from our house. Anyways, um, I'll do a quick couple notes about the Cherokee, then I'm going to show you uh, the trailer. So the Cherokee, um, on the highway, got about 20 miles per gallon pulling this trailer. I think you can attribute that to the fact that as a, the trailer's narrower than the, the Cherokee, so uh, blocks a lot of the wind. Plus it has V-nose and kind of has some aerodynamic shape to it. My only negative that on the Cherokee is uh, I felt a little shake in the rear brakes. Almost like you'd have bad rotors, and the rotors aren't bad. There's, there's you know, not a ton of miles on this Jeep. Um, and it was just the dealership getting a rotation and an oil change uh, about a week ago uh, as part of the plan when we bought this Jeep. So uh, no no issues there. Uh, but it just felt like I was getting pushed a little bit by this trailer. I, th I think we're right around 1,200 pounds on the trailer. Um, dry weight's about 800, and we had our camping gear. So maybe even less. So... Um, Brakes left a little bit to be desired, but this obviously wasn't designed uh, with towing in mind, so I, I'm not. That's just my only small thing. Uh, it felt good with the trailer. It didn't. The, the suspension didn't sag, which I'll show you. Um, it just it felt good. Uh, everything was good. Uh, uh, I was happy with the gas mileage. We averaged about 17. It was about 20 on the highway, about 15. Uh, I would say city, but we were in mountain road, so. Um, it was up and down on elevation so um really i think average was 17 18 which is fantastic if you want to compare that to like a a full-size truck pulling a, a camper that's really good in comparison uh, again i'd still like to get a little bit bigger trailer so maybe it would go down some but um cherokee did good gas mileage wise power wise it was all there Oh, my only other complaint is the electronic shifter. It's more like a suggestion. I was hoping to downshift a little bit more in the mountains, and uh, I would downshift, and it would say, like, well, this is the gear you selected, and this is the one you're currently in, and eventually it would give it to me, but it just didn't do that much at now, slowing it down. So those are the two things. I'm used to full-size truck where you can put some, some brakes on it. Um, you know, when I worked at uh, JCR, then we always had dualies with, like, on the exhaust brakes and it did really good but um obviously that's not what this is and that's not what that is this isn't a big trailer and this isn't a big you know truck but uh i think it really did good um i couldn't be negative about how good the power band was and how good uh, the gas mileage was considering um the hitch is a mopar hitch that i installed and, and no noise and it was, felt strong and everything did good as you can see i'm gonna turn this camera around as you can see though, I mean it is empty, but uh, no noticeable sag on the trailer. Um, the hitch is a five and a half inch drop. It probably could go six inch, but I kind of like having the nose up just a little bit. Um, noted a couple things here. It's a five, a flat five, and um, is the plug-in for the electricity. Um, that's just basically for your running lights, the fan, and the uh, light inside. And then he's got a, uh, they did a crank up style um, uh, jack, tongue jack. I, I honestly think, uh, me personally, I would have done one on the side here and maybe over there do two, or at least just one, but one that swings up. So when you go off road, that's as high as that goes. And, um, I know he didn't build this for off-roading, so uh, he's okay with that. But I, I would have probably done two, so what I like to do and what we did this weekend is I left it on the ball, but I just put a little, I put that all the way down, the jack all the way down, and give it a little pressure, even though we parked on an even road. Um, I don't want it to have to necessarily be, if you move in the trailer every time you move, um, for it to feel uneven. So I just put it down. A little bit just to, to take it off the suspension just slightly and keep things more stable so if you had two jacks in the front and then maybe another two additional in the back stabilizing jacks it would really feel uh secure but it wasn't necessarily that's not all necessary this isn't a 
a full size uh, RV, but that's just points uh, things that I would do on it. Um, you know, I probably add a few more reflectors. There's not that many. Um, the diamond plate actually, uh, I, I know it's there for protection, but it was actually a big negative because, uh, as you can see right now, I just left the running lights on, and you can see the reflection of the running lights are pretty bad. And then cars coming from the opposite direction, it looked like a big uh, flash uh, behind you constantly on the highway. So. Uh, maybe do it in black or uh maybe just use another material or uh that's just you know i'm gonna be a nitpicky for uh uh review sake uh, i do like that the nose is slanted a little bit here because this is the cabinets right underneath here so this is a nice aerodynamic situation the sealant seems really good um the construction on the tongue is, is really strong and beefy uh only other thing over here i want to show you this is a 110 outlet and that's going to be for the air conditioning and that's pretty neat it's easy to get to it's on a good location and i'm glad that it's just 110. um i'll show you behind me i don't know if you can read that sign but that says fox off-road proving grounds at road atlanta so my neighbor got his uh camaro out and was uh kind of revving and tuning on it today next door so i didn't want you guys to have to hear that all that sounds good i didn't want you to have to listen to the uh the tuning process and try to hear me at the same time um so i drove right i live right by road atlanta which is uh this is kind of the parking lot for like the rvs and the big trucks but red atlanta is right over here where they do the petite le mans that kind of thing uh, but they also have uh, this uh dirt bike course over here so that's what you see behind me um he named this these vehicles uh minnow campers and his slogan's vacation bait. Kind of corny, but funny. Um, it has one vent on the roof, and it does have an electric fan that goes with that. Again, really nicely sealed. Um, just really good quality on that. He used some RV style windows with seals. They are slightly recessed. Um, I'm going to flip this around one more time. I'm sorry. So they're slightly recessed, so if this is open and it doesn't get a ton of uh, water just coming in, but I would like it for it to be more recessed. So if it is raining, you're not going to get wet. Or maybe if you do a crank up style or something like that. Um, but this works for this and, it, and it's probably a better priced item. Fenders are nice. Um, and I like the wheel and tire package. Just so we know, um, it's a 205-7515, which that's a nice beefy tire. Um, these look to be derated, I believe. Uh, I'm looking. Uh, yes, they are derated. So, not it. Uh, actually, sorry, C rated. I found it. Yep. Is that C or D? C. C rated, but it's more than enough for uh, the weight uh, that you're uh, gonna be towing on this. Um, anything else? So from the back side. You have a uh, uh, lock and a latch, and I, I I didn't at first think I was a fan of this because it doesn't I don't think it look as good as it actually being just streamlined smooth. But loading like a big cooler or even putting your um, air mattress in it makes it a whole lot more convenient to have this style door. And if you're just using this trailer as a regular trailer, um, just in your everyday life then eh, it makes it actually pretty convenient and more useful uh anyways if you don't mind i gotta walk right back grab the keys okay got the keys sorry about that so i like the way it looks from the outside he had multiple colors and uh, we picked the white and black to match the trailhawk which kind of neat get just some small reflectors in the bottom I, i'm big on safety when it comes to lighting maybe just because I like it and that's one thing I did like about this is um, if when you turn on your uh, your lights or your daytime running lights these are always on these markers are on whether if you long as you have daytime running lights his LED markers are on and uh, they're LED on each side LED tag light um, so nice quality lighting excuse me for just a second here Uh, 
And uh, if you live in Georgia and you decide that you want to rent one of these trailers, uh, one of these minnow campers, here I'll show that to you <laughs> again. Uh, it's website's minnowcampers.com. Um, and you can rent there. We rent it on Outdoorsy. It's a little safer that way. Um, and you can get insurance if you want. And I think we're going to rent a teardrop and then maybe a cricket. I've seen both of those on the on the website on outdoorsy.com and i'm going to try those out before i build my own one of these or buy one of these but this weekend pretty much convinced me that i want to do something like this okay so big swing indoor before i show you this i will say there's probably two questions that you have already and that is does this not pop out more or does it not pop out from the side and the uh, the, the church group and even my parents when they saw this this weekend were like It'd be neat if it had a pop out that came out of the side. And it'd be neat if the top got a little bit bigger, it popped out like a pop up tent. Yes, it would, but then you'd be adding weight and you'd be working against the fact that you don't have a high tow rating with this SUV. And there's a lot of vehicles, a lot of Jeeps especially, that don't have high tow ratings, and this is keeping the weight down. Um, if you want something like that, they do make really small RVs, and um, you can go that route. But this is, this is what it is. And um, the second is, uh, maybe you could do a rooftop tent, or uh, you know I have an outdoor trailer, maybe you don't, but I have an off-road off trailer, and I could add a rack to that and do a, um, a rooftop tent. Last night when it was raining and windy, it, all that would have been shaken, and I like that this is hard structure. And that's why I keep going back to something like this, like a, either a teardrop or this style. I like the way the teardrop looks better, but this... Um, this trailer is more useful after the fact. Teardrop's probably better off when you are overlanding or camping um, because a lot of them have the extra space in the back to put a full kitchen in. You don't really have the room for this. You'd have to build something on the outside um, or on the inside, but then you take away from your inside space, which there isn't much of. So, but as a regular trailer, like just say you're moving or going on a vacation trip and you want to carry more luggage or you're just going down to the hardware store and picking up some lumber, or you get a lot of groceries at Costco, <laughs> boom, it's it's great. Um, so I think that'd be great. So without a further ado, let me show you the inside. I have this door open. So um, it just has some plywood floors, and he's put down some vinyl and hasn't really like done anything other than just laid it on top, which is a good idea. It makes it easy to clean, easy to replace. Um, and then maybe if you're going to get some lumber, Maybe you just do the wood and that's easier to clean. You don't have to tear your vinyl or maybe you throw something on top. The roof, again, just some plywood. But I think on this, he did some kind of like teak. It's thinner and um, it it, uh, it looks pretty good. I'm going to open the front door so there's a little bit more light in here. Open it up the vents. Get some air flowing through here. Uh... They open up fairly good, and you get a decent cross breeze. Let me go ahead and open that front door. So the first night that we camped, we were there for two nights. And the first night of camping, uh, Nicole just did the back windows and the top vent. That's all uh, That's all she did. And she said it got a little hot, and it got, it was probably about, it was 69. And I think it got down maybe a little so it got down a little bit lower during the night. I think it may have gotten to 67, 66. That small little breeze. And she said it got a little stuffy with uh, her and Abby in the uh, in the trailer. But, I, you know, it does have air conditioning. But she was just trying it without. Um, we just had got in to camp and we got in kind of late. And uh, we hadn't run the uh, drop cord yet. So uh, we just tried. Um, you know, with the vents and just like a little warm. Um, the guy that sells this says he uses four. He used four inches of insulation, and you could feel it. And it definitely helps. I would sure it helps with heat, um, but it definitely keeps it cooler, uh, especially during the day. I think the white color helps a lot. Um, but you can see it in the door how thick the insulation is. And he didn't say this, but what I think he did is he just bought this trailer and then he insulated it and kind of specked it out to how he likes. Um, the door's neat, like it won't go too far, but there's nothing to keep it held open, which uh, I'm not a big fan of. Basic RV latch, um, it has two locks on it. 
So you can lock the handle and it's got like a deadbolt. Which, uh, I think this thing would be bear proof uh, if you put the lock on the back. Then I think you could keep bears out of this. Um, the windows are strong enough. So, uh, yeah, I think it'd be good. Hopefully you can see all this. So he's got some cabinets. He's got top space here. Um, so you can put some here. And then uh, two wooden cabinets. Nice little shelving. Pretty basic. And then this AC unit. And I have no idea what kind of unit it is. I know the vent comes out of the front. Comes with a remote. And um, it only works with the 110 power. So it doesn't work if it's just plugged into your uh, your Jeep battery. Um, another idea would be cool if, is if you can run that off a of Marine. Maybe um, um, uh, heavy duty batteries with solar. I don't know if that's possible. So it has a light. It's kind of dim. Um, but it's LED and you can see it pretty well in the uh, nighttime. There's the upper vent. And it just cranks up. And then... You have a fan so nicole ran the fan for a while but then uh, it only works if you have your uh your running lights on on your car car doesn't have to be running but then you're drawing your battery down so she only ran that for about 30 minutes before they went to bed the first time to try to pull the heat out she kept the back door closed front door closed and then these two windows and then when she went to bed she just lowered down the vent just slightly in case it rained and had to turn the fan off now i could immediately feel that just pulling it. I know it doesn't, wouldn't seem like a lot, but I actually filled the cross breeze pretty well. And I think on a, in the fall, early winter, early spring, as long as you're not raining, it'd be pretty nice. Problem is we had the issue of some rain off and on this weekend, and um, we just couldn't leave the vent completely open. Um, so we left it just slightly, slightly cracked. Right now it's completely closed. So it has two locks on the outside. You can lock the handle, lock the deadbolt, which I think is nice and plenty safe. Um, that's about it. Everything on this is pretty quality. The another nice thing on this that I like is if you're looking at a teardrop, they're anywhere from $6,000 all the way up to $20,000. And I don't know if you looked at the crickets, but they're eight, twelve thousand. $12,000. There's a lot of these trailers now that are real small, and they're in that five to twenty thousand dollar range i've seen some up to twenty five thousand this one sells for thirty nine hundred bucks so it doesn't have everything you'd want but it does come with air conditioning and some cabinets and it's just big enough to fit a full-size mattress we just fit a little bed for abby and um a twin size air mattress and if it was just me and nicole on a romantic weekend i think we could make this work <laughs> it's pretty tight would be pretty tight quarters for sleeping Especially, it'd be nice to have the AC on during that. But um, that, what I would like is if, if it was two inches wider, um, would be nice. What's that? <laughs> I apologize. Um, so uh, if it was two inches wider, it'd be perfect, I think, for us. And then maybe you can fit a queen size air mattress and then a little bed for Abby. I thought it'd be neat if. Um, I, I don't think we would use these cabinets that are right here because all of our food we just keep in like um, containers and or in the cooler. So what I thought would be neat is if you did the wind or the air conditioning higher, maybe a window unit, something like that, that's removable. And then in the front nose section, I could build like a baby bed that's just uh, a mat from like a changing table and like a pool noodle and then maybe like a little rail to keep it all in. And then she'd just be at her head. Um, and then we could even do some cabinetry towards the end, maybe hanging um, or shelving or something where there's not windows. I would like for there to be slightly bigger windows, bigger openings, uh, and some kind of awning so that you can, if in the rain, you can have them open. This thing in the rain is a big problem because you're really not going to be able to get the windows, to keep them all the way open. You're not going to be able to keep the vent all the way open. And if it's hot, even if it's not hot, it's just going to get kind of nasty inside um just from the you just people breathing you know in such a small space um so my my cons are it's a little too small it'd be great for one person i think it'd be great for a hunting camp for one guy and um i i think it would be great for uh 
just using it as a little trailer to haul your cargo and stuff around. Uh, I think it needs to be a little bit bigger, but I like the wheels and tires. I wish it had trailer brakes on it. That'd be great for these smaller vehicles. I do like the Vinos. I'm not against flat, but I think the Vinos was kind of nice, and, it, and it, I'd like to know a side-by-side -side comparison for um, as far as uh, uh, miles per gallon goes. I don't like the outside rivets. Uh, they have a way to do this uh, without having to do these screws on the outside. If you're wrapping them, like you can see where they put the vinyl here it doesn't look as good they have to either work around them or it bubbles up um so i mean that's just nitpicky stuff but for the price range this is a fantastic trailer and i don't think you um would really be hurting yourself by getting something like this especially if you're like maybe one guy or a young couple <laughs> and you're not that big of people uh i think it'd be great i again i like to rent a uh, teardrop or a uh, cricket it's kind of out of my price range and maybe i can save up to it and uh and see if i like that better i would love a kitchen solution so maybe if i had like a built-in here or uh, maybe something on the roof or i don't know i would have to come up with some solutions another thing for off-road would be great better to have a longer tongue and then maybe you can put a tongue box on it to have your kitchen in there um, you know, I have all my kitchen stuff, and what we did is we just packed it inside, and then once we got there, I just set up a station, and then I just threw the tarp over at night so it didn't get rained on. I put my firewood up there on the Garvin rack, um, which it did great, by the way, on the trip, and uh, just left it up there because I don't want to get all the wood um, particles and where we're going to be sleeping or where Nicole is going to be sleeping, but um, the vent comes out right here in the front for that AC, but it worked well. I'm going to tell the guy I really enjoyed it because we did and uh, it was fantastic last night like I said when it was storming I um, I couldn't have asked for any more uh, it kept my wife and baby safe my five month old and uh, that's what we needed it for this weekend so we have a camping trip coming up in the next weekend or in the next month and I'll see if I can't uh, maybe rent something uh, similar uh, like a cricket or uh, some kind like a um, uh, teardrop maybe that I would fit in so I don't necessarily have the hammock camp every time although I do enjoy hammock camping except for last night when it was super windy and raining I like hammock camping when it's about uh, 60 degrees outside and uh, it was about 70 and then it dropped to 60 so then I had to get my my sleeping bag on and it was raining it was windy but I'll quit complaining we had a great time this weekend love that we got the opportunity to rent this and try it out it gives me some great ideas for building my own if you guys have any ideas or if you have your own personal off-road trailer or overland vehicle uh, trailer or maybe if you use rooftop tents tell me the pluses the negatives um, the positives and what you would suggest and uh, I am considering selling my off-road trailer or specking it out to be a camper or just keeping it saving up some money and buying something like this or building something like this um, I bet I could find a trailer manufacturer who builds something similar to this size and then I can just go to like an RV store and buy the windows and the roof vents and maybe do solar I don't know maybe it's gonna take me down a whole new path for like building trailers just for fun or for money I don't know let me know what you guys think I really appreciate you guys watching this um, this video for us was really fun to make I know we didn't put a lot into the actual camping uh, because we want to make it all about the Jeep and the trailer and they both did really good on this trip we drove uh, three hours all the way out to Alabama went up their tallest mountain went down it got good gas mileage had great performance reliability good air conditioning everyone was safe and um, that's what's nice about this new technology um, you know I wouldn't have considered doing this in my old Cherokee with like a tent and a hammock not with our baby for me it's great I'm fine I can handle the, the ruggedness of it but for bringing your whole family along, this is fantastic. Um, I love to be able to share that adventure with my kid so early in her life. So uh, I don't know if, if that's something that she's going to want to do when she gets older, but at least I'm giving her the opportunity now to expose her to new things. And I think that's one of my favorite things about being a dad is just teaching and um, watching them experience things as well, even though it's so young, and I'm sure I'm going to get to do more and more of that. I'll quit being sappy. I just really appreciate you guys watching. Glad we're able to make these videos. We don't really have any budget to make these videos. It's just us filming our lives and the adventures we like to do. So, uh, you know, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. If you can, check out Blackberry Off-Road. There's uh, stuff like this roof rack and the fog lights that are on this vehicle. And uh, we're going to be adding more stuff 
over and over and over but uh, as time goes on but I really do appreciate you guys uh, following and subscribing I'm almost at 300 so uh, maybe you can be 300 and uh, hit us with a big thumbs up uh, like as well as always we'll be seeing you